hey y'all welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video all right y'all so y'all know what today is today is taco tuesday so i got me a large mountain dew and i got three nacho taco supremes yeah i haven't I haven't did a taco tuesday in a minute And it's been a long time since I had a Mountain Dew. It tastes, I don't know, it tastes, um, I don't know, it tastes, it tastes different. Oh, and I got some fries. Mmm, mm, these are good. I wasn't going, I wasn't going to some cheese for the fries, but I'm not eating it. I was. I wasn't going to dip fries, but you have a you have to um, spend a certain amount of money for them to deliver. So I added the fries to it. Mm. See the taco, and see they messed up because I asked for a nacho taco. And they just, just gave me a regular taco shell. So I'm kind of pissed off about that because I like the, the nacho shells. Yeah, this is the first thing I'm eating today. It, uh, it's about 5.30. And I haven't had anything to eat today. And they didn't put any napkins in here. <sighs> They're putting no napkins. Anyway. Yeah, I was watching CNN, and they were talking about um, JD Vance and how he lied about the Haitians eating. Dog. Well, we knew. Come on, let's be real. We knew he was lying, but he admitted it on CNN. He actually said that he lied, but he said he did what he had to do to get people to focus on the real issues, which would be the migrants or the foreigners coming into this country. So he said that he did what he had to do. So the lady asked him, you don't feel bad for spreading the rumors because they've been, they, uh, these people have been getting bomb threats. They had to uh, close the school down. He said, no, he didn't feel bad because if he needed to lie to bring attention to the, what he calls the ongoing problems of immigrants coming into this country, then he had to do what he had to do. So he said, so you admitted, you admitted, you're admitting to lying. And he said, yes. He said, but it was for the greater good. No, it ain't positive for the greater good. You're lying on these people. People are getting bombed that their children are being threatened in these schools. We just had a shooting in Georgia last week where two kids was killed and two teachers was killed. And you're going to spread, which, and you, first of all, you already know the Magna, um, uh, club or gang or whatever, you already know they're looking for a reason to defend Trump on whatever. So if he's sitting there, you're telling these lies to Trump. He's going on national TV spreading these lies. So his magna group of thugs and, and whatever, 
they're going to take it to the next level, which they did, making threats. And I'm just hoping that now that he, he said he lied about it, that they will back off because we got to worry about these kids getting hurt and stuff like that. I mean, how is it that these people don't see that Trump is a, is a problem? I mean, it's just like they did when Joe Biden was running for president and he, I think he was going to Texas and they had, I don't know if it was Trump or his son was telling them because somebody said they they um they spotted the Joe Biden's um not minivan it was the RV they spotted his RV on the highway and it was either Trump or his son it was either Trump or his son that said for them to to um run the van over to like push it over to the side. Hold on one minute, y'all. I mean, the fact that they would go to this extreme to get people to, people know what's going on. They know that there are immigrants or whatever and uh, um, foreigners coming into this country. We, uh, everybody in the, the country knows that. They're putting up all of these new apartment buildings to house the um, the people that's coming over from different countries. They're putting up all these um, affordable housing apartments and stuff like that. I understand. We all know that. So you didn't have to lie like that. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to lie and say that people are eating cats and dogs and geese. They're taking the geese. They're eating the cats. Like, come on. That is, that is, that is such a crazy lie. And the fact that he is spewing this lie and he knows that them people, them crazy nutcase people that are backing him are going to go wild. They're going to take it to the extreme. Now you got the bomb threats. You got people, the, the uh, uh, um, government or whatever, or the city closing down the schools to keep the kids safe. And it's like, come on. Like, this, I don't understand how people see Trump and don't assume that this man is going to be a major issue. You know, it reminds me of when Moses led the people out of slavery and uh, he was only gone he wasn't uh, how was it how long was it gone a day or whatever he spoke to God and God told him to to um, go and take his Ten Commandments down because his people have corrupted themselves I gotta watch Ten Commandments again I love that movie um um, Moses wasn't even gone long and in that length of time that he was gone mind you all the wonders that he's shown them all the things that God can do all the wonders splitting the sea would, would have been enough for me oh come on come on ain't no way he Moses ain't doing this by itself God split the sea look at it he all the wonders that Moses have shown them. And it only took one man to spew a couple of a couple of negative things and they all turned, well not all of them. A lot of them turned on God and they start worshiping the, this idol. And the man he was talking about he was going to take them back to um Pharaoh he was going to take them back to Pharaoh and told them to get all their jewelry, all their gold, and make him a statue of, of, um, of a god or whatever, uh, basically to 
for him to accept them back. It, it, that's basically, it was their way of saying, we're sorry we left. So we're going to come back and we're going to come back with a gift for you so you can welcome us back. All it took with everything that uh, Moses showed them, Pharaoh never showed them wonders and miracles. He never showed them that. He had them in bondage. He had them in slavery. And even with all the things that Moses showed them that God could do, they still turned and went the other way. And it reminds me of Trump. I look at all his followers. They act like he's a god. They act like he can, he can, um, he can perform miracles and stuff like that. They worship him as if he split the Red Sea. They worship him as if he can turn water into wine and cure, cure leprosy and stuff. This is how they look at them. They treasure this man like he's a god. When he lost the election to Biden, there were people outside crying like if somebody whipped their ass. They were out there crying, oh, God. <laughs> and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, I ain't never seen that. Okay, when Barack became president, we was happy. Excuse me, y'all. I'm hungry, but when Barack became president, we was happy. Don't get me wrong. I don't just stay. But I wasn't crying. I was. Listen. When they tallied up the numbers and they found out that Barack won, my whole block, my whole block was outside. From one end to the block to the to the other end. Everybody was outside cheering, hugging, slapping each other five. We were happy. And I think mostly because I don't believe that anybody ever thought they would ever live long enough to see a black president. And I think that's that's what the excitement was. And it was just the to knowing one, knowing that we have a black president, two, knowing that the majority of the country, the majority of the world felt that Barack Obama was a better human being, a better president than uh, Trump. And then, not only did he win the presidency, but he served twice, right behind each other. So, it was a lot of people saying, oh, they wish he would have ran this year. I said, no. He did his two terms. Leave that man alone. Let that man rest. It's somebody else's turn to be scrutinized and talked about and treated like crap. Have his wife disrespected. Now nah, he served his two terms. We good. We good on that. But Trump, Trump is, and he's 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 just really bad. And he wanna, he wanna cut so much. He wanna cut welfare. He wanna cut um, social security. He wanna make it to where you have to be older to get social security now. I think you can you can um give social security around 65 but he want to make it to where you have to be like 70 75 to get um social security now my theory on that 
is this. Most people don't live to see 75. And let's be let's just be honest. We hope we're going to see 75. In the Bible, they only uh, the Lord only promises you 75 years. That's it. But most people don't live to see 75. And I believe that's the reason why they push they trying to push it. If he becomes president, He's trying to push it to 75 because he said he knows the majority of people out here is not going to live to see their social security. He knows that. That's what they're banking on. That's why they're trying to raise the age of you getting social security because they know the majority of people out here is not going to live long enough to see 75. Most people live to see 70, um, maybe 65, and they either pass away from some kind of illness or something like that. But most people don't live to see 75. And he knows that. And this way, if the people don't live to see 75, that's money they don't have to pay out. That's Social Security money that they don't have to pay out. And then they get to keep the government or whatever, they get to keep that money. They don't have to pay people out. Even though these people have earned it, they've worked all their lives. So now that they retire, they get to retire with their Social Security benefits and stuff like that. They don't want to have to pay anything to, to anyone. So they, if they if they come into office, if Trump becomes president, he's trying to raise Social Security to where you have to be 75, I think, to be able to collect. And that's messed up. Because there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be struggling to maintain their life struggling to eat, struggling to pay bills, waiting for their social security, and then to die before they can actually get it. And then on top of that, he's trying to stop free lunch in school for kids. Now, There's some kids, there's some kids in this world right now that school lunch is the only lunch that they get. There's a lot, a lot of people out here that don't have jobs that are struggling day to day to put food on the table. And sometimes when the kids go to school, that's why a lot of parents get their school, their kids to school early in the morning to make sure they eat breakfast and then they have lunch. Because a lot of them, if they don't get them to school early enough to eat breakfast and lunch, a lot of their kids will be hungry all morning. Some people don't have food to feed their kids in the morning. Some people don't have food to feed their kids at uh, dinner time. So they look forward to the kids having lunch in school because at least they have something in their stomach. Now he's trying to take that away. So what the what do you do when you're a parent who have no money, nowhere feeding your kids, and you're looking for a solution, and there's no other solution but your kids eating at school. So even if they don't eat at night, at least you know if you get them there early in the morning, they're going to have breakfast and they're going to have lunch. You at least know they're going to have two meals for that day, even if they're not able to have dinner. But he don't care about that. He's looking for ways to make rich people richer and make poor people poorer. I thank God that I've never had to endure not having food for my kids to eat. Because I don't think I'd be able to bear that. Having food, not having a roof over my head. Not, you know, not knowing where your next meal is going to come from, where your kid's next meal is going to come from. That is a scary thought to think that your kids are sitting around looking for you to find a solution to them eating. And you, you have nothing to give them. You have nothing to do. You can't do nothing for them. Just sit there and watch them be hungry. I can imagine what 
those women in Africa in the poorest part of Africa where they the kids have their big bellies and stuff and their stomachs are swollen because they're a lot of their a lot of these kids stomachs are riddled with with um with worms with tapeworms and stuff like that and that's the, a lot of the, and a lot of the reasons for their stomach being big is because of that you know what I'm saying and to be a mother and see a child basically dying because they they have no food and you see their stomach you can see their ribs but their stomachs is way out there I I, I don't know I, I don't know a lot about Kamala Harris but I, to me at this point anything is better than Trump and what I think is that people are so bothered by having a black Indian woman. First of all, she's black slash Indian. And then on top of it, she's a woman. And I'm pretty sure that they never thought that they would ever, first of all, you never thought that, they never thought they would have a black man behind the um, White House. But to have a black person who's a woman that's something they never thought would ever happen because everybody's always looking for the president, whether he's black or white, or Spanish, Chinese, whatever. They always look for a man. Even if they don't want a Chinese or, or black or Indian or Spanish, they still want him to be a man. The fact that not only she got three strikes against her, she's black, she's Indian, and she's a woman. Nobody thought that. So they really don't want her in office. And Trump calls calls her her. Him and J.D. Vance call her sluts. They call her bitches and hoes. And this is my thing. I don't know if y'all know back in the days, because I'm a little older than a lot of people that uh, watch me. Back in the days, you couldn't disrespect the president. You couldn't badmouth the president. You could get locked up for badmouthing the president or the vice president. Now... You can call them bitches, you can call them hoes, you can call them uh, degenerates, you can call them whatever you want. They've changed the rules so much about uh, 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 being president and, and, and the government has changed things so much to now you can literally threaten the president out loud, shoot at the president, uh, 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 disrespect uh, uh, the president, in every way possible and you don't get locked up you know you could say the worst things you want about the president and nothing is done and back in the days you could not utter anything negative about the president and they would secret service would come to your door and grab you up and lock you up but now shoot you could practically run up on the president and, and punch him in his face and nothing would happen to you probably uh, especially if you're black, <laughs> you can run up on the president and beat the beat the hell out of him, and they probably just give him a slap on. Remember that guy? I forgot what his name was, and I forgot what state this was. But the guy that went inside the the boy that went inside the church, I think he was like 19, white guy. He went inside the church and sat down with the the preacher. And sat down for the full service and the, the preacher sat with him and tried to convince him not to do what he was going to do and told him about God and revenge and, 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 and the right thing and the wrong thing. He prayed with this man and this man knew, he knew that regardless of what this preacher was saying to him, that he was going to kill him. He knew it. Nothing this preacher was saying to him was getting through to him because he had one thing in mind and he felt like black people were the, the enemy. So he sat there and let this preacher waste his time trying to turn him around when all along he knew he was going to kill him and the other people in the church. He sat there and he probably behind everything this preacher was saying, he probably was sitting there laughing inside his head he probably was cracking up and thinking huh I'm gonna let you talk 
and then I'm going to kill you. I'm going to let you say whatever you're going to say. You're not going to change my mind. You're not going to deter me from, from or steer me away from what my plan was all along is to kill you and everybody in this church. So I'm going to let I'm going to sit here and I'm going to let you talk and I'm going to look at you and I'm going to act like I'm listening. And I'm going to let you think that you are swaying me to do the right thing. I'm playing with you. I'm, I'm playing with your intelligence. And once you finish, and you said your prayers, and I'm going to let you pray with me and everything. And once you finish, then I'm going to blow your brains out. He, it, After all of that that happened, the fact that the cops didn't even handcuff him, they took him to what, Burger King or McDonald's or Wendy's, one of them restaurants. They took him to the restaurant to get him something to eat. They let him sit there and eat without handcuffs on him. They let him sit there and eat. They took him to a drive through let him order food, and let him sit down without handcuffs on and let him eat before they took him in. If that was a black person that went up in a white church, sat down with the preacher, allowed the preacher to pray with him and try to talk him out of doing what he was going to do, if that would have been a black man, they would have shot him on sight. They would have shot him on sight. They would have put so many bullets in that man, you wouldn't have been able to count him. But this white guy, not only did they not handcuff him, they took him to a fast food restaurant, a drive through and let him get something to eat. And that was their way, in my opinion, that was their way of telling him, good job. Now, we have to take you in because we have to do our job. But personally, we feel that you did a good job. You did us proud. That's what that was. But if that was a black man, they would have they would have they would have shot him, and then once he fell on the ground, they would have handcuffed him, and then they would have shot him again. They would have shot him. They would have killed him, and they would have felt justified because he killed white people. But this white boy who in there, and I'm not prejudiced because I have white people in my family. Like honestly, uh, my husband is half white. My husband's father is white. My husband's father is a white Jewish man and his mother is Jamaican. And I have, I have, uh, uh, my, my, my family is the color of the rainbow because my grandmother, my mother's mother is full Indian. I don't know what my, my father's, uh, I don't know what my father's parents are. I know they was born, they was born in, um, my grandmother on my father's side, my grandmother, my grandfather on my father's side was born in, uh, I think, Maryland. They was born in Maryland. But I don't know their ancestry uh, story or anything like that. So, But I know my mother's mother is full Indian. Her mother and father was full Indian. My grandmother was full Indian. And I think my grandfather was Bayesian. My mother's father, I think, was Bayesian or something like that. Either way. Then I have Haitian in my family. I have Spanish in my family. I have white in my family. You know, like I said, Indian, Bayesian. So my family is the color of the rainbow. So I couldn't be prejudiced if I wanted to. My daughter and my grandkids, my oldest son, his, his, um, his wife is half Italian and half Haitian. And my daughter... You know, y'all see my look, my little grandson. His father is Spanish, and my granddaughter, which is my daughter's uh, oldest child, her father's Spanish. So, we're the color of the rainbow in this family here. So, I couldn't be prejudiced if I wanted to be. I'm just speaking facts on the situation. Yeah, I gotta take my time because my stomach ain't that big anymore. So I gotta take my time eating these tacos. But. Like I said, I'm voting for Kamala Harris. I don't know a lot about her, 
but I promise you at this point, anybody's better than, just about anybody's better than Trump. I've watched debates, or not debates, I watch debates, I've watched rallies where he's made fun of handicapped people. And y'all seen when he was up on thing, he was, he was doing that, he was making fun of, of handicapped people. I heard him laughing at people that have been shot and killed. He's called uh, our war heroes, he's called them suckers. He said, I like people that, that didn't get shot. Um. And then when they was talking about Pence, Mike Pence uh, being captured, he said, I, he said, I like, he said, I like army. Uh, he said, I like when people don't get captured, like saying that basically like because he was captured, he, he shouldn't have been considered a hero because he was captured. Shit happens. He get captured. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't him, it would have been somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But he lived through that. And we don't know what he went through when he was captured, if he was tortured how he was being treated, but he survived it. And that alone makes him a hero because he went over there to fight for our country and he was captured and he made it through it and he was able to come home. And that alone makes him a hero. And the fact that Trump would say that he's, a, that all army are suckers and, 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 but that's why he made sure he never went to the army, right? Cause, cause they, cause, they're suckers. He wouldn't have lasted a day over there. He wouldn't have lasted a day. He'd have been crying to his daddy, get me out of here. Whatever resources you have, you're rich. You're a billionaire. Whatever resources you have, use what you got to get what you want and get me out of here. <laughs> Everything... Everybody or all the people that follow Trump think he's some type of some type of savior. And if they if they elect him as president again, he's gonna show them just how wrong they are. But it'll be too late because we're gonna have four years of this 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 idiot. We're going to have four years of him, and whoever comes behind him is going to have to reverse every bit of damage that he did in the four years that he's president. I'm, 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 man, I'm praying, I'm praying that he uh, does not become president because I just, I don't see nothing good happening for any of us. Even the people that want him so bad, he's making so many promises to these people. And they're just praising him like he's the second coming. And when they see that they was wrong, you know, he's already had a lot of the people that was following him. He's already had a lot of them go to Kamala Harris because they said just everything that they've been seeing lately, they said that he's unhinged, that he's, he's, um, he's nuts, he's crazy, he's losing it. He's 78 years old. He's 78 years old, so he's going to lose a little up here. You know what I'm saying? Stuff is going to start to to deteriorate, you know? He's not fit to be anybody's president. He's not fit to be the president of his household. He's not He's not fit to be the, the, the head of his table at dinner time. I wouldn't I wouldn't appoint him to carve the turkey at at Thanksgiving dinner. Anyway, I don't know y'all. That's my thoughts on it. I just think that I hope Kamala Harris wins and I hope she wins by a big margin. I hope that it, she didn't just win off the skin of skin of her teeth. I hope she wins by a big margin. I really do. Because it it'll shut him up. Because he thinks that you know, oh she's stupid. Oh she's this. Oh she's that. First of all, if she was stupid, she wouldn't have made it as far as she's made it. She's come this far. You can't come this far by being stupid. Well, then again, I don't know. Because Trump made it. Excuse me. Trump made it this far, and he's stupid. But 
he he kills me. He says that he's had the biggest rally since Martin Luther. No, he said he had the biggest rally, even bigger than Martin Luther King when he did a speech, I Have a Dream. He said he's helped more black people than uh, than Abraham Lincoln. Uh, now, he, now he's running around talking about he hate Taylor Swift because <laughs> she adores Kamala Harris. He put on it. He actually put it on 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 the uh, uh, um, thing. I hate Taylor Swift, and he's seventy eight years old. Talking to this young girl, he hates her because she endorsed Kamala Harris. So when so he don't have a problem, he wouldn't have a problem if she would endorse him. He would oh I love Taylor Swift. Oh she's a wonderful girl that Taylor Swift. Beautiful, beautiful girl. But because she didn't endorse him, he hates her. Right, that's not going to be the end of it. He's going to say something else about her. This is not the end. And I hope that everybody that's a fan of Taylor Swift or her, what she calling her Swifties, I hope they're paying close attention to what he's saying and they rally, I mean, really, really rally to go and vote and vote him out of office. <clears throat> I feel sorry for this country, man. We haven't had, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't had a upfront, down to earth, straightforward uh, president since Clinton and Barack Obama. But it is what it is. I know a lot of y'all would uh, disagree with me, but Clinton and Barack, they were cool. They was down to earth. There was no foul language. There was no cursing people out. There was no disrespecting women. There was none of that going on. They 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 talked about the issues and what people wanted to hear. There was never any vulgar language and stuff like that. There was none of that going on. I don't how do how do people want a president that is this vulgar, this disrespectful to women and and the fact that they want to uh they want to ban abortions and you got women out here being raped and they're going to be forced to carry a rape baby Ugh. he gonna make it to where abortions is a, is illegal and if you go to have an abortion you could be arrested so even if you're 11, 12 years old and you were raped, you're going to have to carry that baby. What do a 11-year-old know about the pain of giving birth? An 11-year-old is still developing. These children are still developing. The pain that they would they have to endure. I mean, come on, let's be for real. We as grown women can barely handle uh, the uh, pain of labor. A lot of us women have died on the table giving birth. So how do they expect a 12, 11, 13 year old, if they, if they were raped, how do they expect them to deal with the pain of labor when us fully grown women have a hard time dealing with it? I know I did. I had three kids. I gave I gave nap I gave birth to three children natural birth. I was only in labor an hour with each one of them. But for that hour, I thought I was going to lose my mind. The pain that I felt for that hour was unbearable. I didn't have an epidural. I didn't have none of that. I dealt with it. I I you know it was only an hour, but it didn't feel like it. It didn't feel like an hour. The pain was excruciating. 
my daughter, my first child, she ripped me up so bad. They, they had to sew me inside out. I was hemorrhaging all night. They had me sitting on a bedpan because they said that I was bleeding out like a faucet. And they said they had every like every couple of hours they had to come in my room and give me a shot in my hip to stop the blood from flowing the way it was. Cause they said if it did if they didn't slow it and and stop it from flowing, they said I would have hemorrhaged to death. So every like every hour or so or every couple of hours they was coming in giving me shots in my hips. And I was 21. They was giving me shots in my hip to stop the bleeding. I had to sleep, I had to stay in the um the OR for a full night all night long. I kept getting waking up in my sleep so they can come and give me shots. I had an IV in my arm. I had an oxygen mask on. I had all this stuff going on because my, my daughter, she was eight pounds, 12 ounces, and she ripped me up. They said she, they said I look like shredded meat down there. So what they expect a, a child to do if a child was to be raped at that young of age, how do they expect the child to handle something like that? They don't care. But anyway, then they, the, the thing that gets me is they always talk about this world is over overpopulated, but then you say you want to ban, uh, ban abortions. So you're bringing more people, uh, more children into this world that you say is overpopulated. You're taking away free food for kids uh, to eat and all of that. But yet, if a woman have an abortion, you want to lock her up. They make that make sense. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to finish eating this food. I said what I had to say about this whole situation. If you like this conversation, give me a thumbs up, comment below. Let me know what do you think about this whole Kamala Harris and Trump thing. Who, who, you know, who, do, who do you feel is the best choice for president? And what do you think about this ban on abortion? Do you think that um, it should be illegal to have an abortion, or do you think that a woman should have the right to make her own choice on whether or not she wants to have a child? You know. Uh, Share me out, y'all, with your family and friends. Give me a thumbs up. And until I see y'all again, until I speak to y'all again, be blessed, stay blessed. Peace.